Hello everybody, it's uh, Alex Shevchenko here as always from Aurora Labs team and we are here as always on the Aurora's YouTube channel every Friday at this specific time and sharing updates with you within our uh, weekly Aurora Alpha League session. This is the time for us to talk with you uh, to share the insights into the Aurora ecosystem and this is also the time for you to ask your questions and we will be able to answer them. Um, this is a live stream, so you're able to go right here, right now, in the comment section and post your questions there, or any comments, right? And we would like to start with the pretty big uh, event that was happening during this week. Actually, yesterday, Pitch Talk was organizing a specific Aurora demo day, where many people from uh, different projects were coming and showcasing their um, uh, the, the, the tech that they have been building. Uh, and I was also privileged to be on that particular event. I was uh, talking a little bit about the Aurora Cloud and the new functionality of the Aurora Cloud available there. Um, as always with any demos, there were some minor things that were not going great. Uh, there was uh, the Explorer was not loaded in there, but uh, but we've quickly fixed the the problem. And now, in case you're going to go through the demo on the oracloud.dev website you're going to see all of your transactions available in the explorer besides that there was a pretty long setup of different projects right and i would like to pay your attention uh, to one particular thing obviously it is available on the youtube on the pitch talks youtube um, and uh, one particular thing that was interesting there it was a round table that was uh, themed with real world assets and how these assets can be used in conjunction with the blockchain. So together with Mikita from New Tribe Capital, we have been talking uh, about how this tokenization of real world assets is able to change many, many different things. This is a pretty insightful um, conversation. This is not something that you usually hear from me or from, from kind of other blockchain people. This is a point of view on the blockchain a little bit from the outside, from the Web2 perspective. Um, it is something that can help you to understand how Web2 is looking at our vertical and which benefits they see in, uh, in the blockchain. So I encourage everyone to take a look at this. Uh, uh, I think that there are quite a lot of interesting things there. Again, you're able to easily find pitch talk on YouTube and uh, uh, and check out this latest uh, live stream that they were doing just yesterday. In the beginning of the week, I was composing a thread to explain um, a little bit uh, the differences in between the L2 stacks that are available in the market from the Aurora Cloud. Because many people are coming and asking the question, okay, well, like there is this polygon edge, there are, there are avalanche subnets, there are, like, and in the end, I can take Optimism, fork it, launch it, and then it kind of going to work. Uh, it is, yes, it's going to work, but you are going to be missing out on multiple particular components. So for everyone who is interested in to dive in a little bit deeper and more technical details, I would say, uh, of the differences in between Aurora Cloud and uh, the other options for um, L2, uh, L2s, um, uh, I encourage you to read through this thread. The long story short, uh, the current, from my point of view, the current setup of L2s is actually a step back for the uh, for the blockchain vertical. L2s are centralized; they are running on centralized servers, which are called sequencers and uh, they are sequencing all of the transactions they are responsible for making sure that the, your transactions in case you're a user are going to be executed on an l2 and in case of a glitch or of a uh, intentional uh, uh, malicious behavior of a sequencer uh, your transactions are not going to be executed in some cases you would be able to still exit these ecosystems uh, however it is going to take some time and this some time it actually means that there are like uh, hundreds of hours or just days that you need to wait until uh, until you would be able to exit these ecosystems. And because of this, this is very, very problematic 
L2s in their current setup are bringing blockchain technology back to the setup of the centralized databases. The second thing is, that is super crucial for uh, for understanding is that L2s are separate ecosystems. There are, you are not able to call from Optimism and Avalanche smart or sorry Avalanche and Arbitrum smart contract or even the Ethereum mainnet smart contract. This is not possible. In order to do this, you need to have bridges that are not delivering to you. Uh, delivering to you synchronicity or composability that is a pretty complicated setup and taking into account that bridges are prone to uh to problems and uh, to to attacks they they potentially may not be um functioning well uh or they can be just hacked uh this uh, this setup is very very complicated on the contrary with aurora and different aurora evms that are deployed or different aurora chains that are deployed on top of near you would be able through our own cross contract calls to call any other smart contract or any other aurora or on near natively and uh, uh, this means that the chains of aurora are not separated they are not separate ecosystems they are in fact enhancing each other uh, increasing the uh, utility of every single application of this uh, of these chains so that is a very very short description there are much more information in the thread uh, there are already some people who have been reading through this so i encourage you to take a look at this in case you have any questions uh, or you're disagreeing with these uh, points you're always able to go in this twitter thread and comments and uh, um, yeah and just comment and uh, we'll ha we can have there a meaningful conversation by the way, the cross-contract call functionality is something that you are able to read on the developer portal of Aurora that is located on dev.aurora.dev. And on this portal, uh, there are quite a lot of information. There are links to the documentation. There are many other things, including the developer blog. And uh, Alexey Krasinski has been writing this week in this uh, developer blog a an article, the technical article, about spinning up your own Aurora node. So for some of the use cases and some of the partners who are working with Aurora, it is pretty important to run their own Aurora nodes. So they have been asking how to do this, right? And uh, uh, there is obviously a open RPC that is available for the public RPC that is available for everyone. It is located on mainnet.aurora.dev. This is the endpoint that you're usually querying in case you are working with Aurora. For example, in case you, you're a user of Aurora Plus, then through Aurora Plus, it installs this endpoint as a default endpoint for your MetaMask. Now, however, uh, in such applications that are usually heavy reliant on the uh, blockchain data, they're tending to run their own Aurora node, right? And this is the article to afford these people to understand how things are working, how how pieces are, are connected in, into each other, and what is the setup script and how you are able to, uh, to run your node with all of the links, with all of the deep technical details. So for anyone who wants to do this, you can check out our developer portal and see this information there. We're continuing with our uh, set of articles, Meet the Team, and this time we're publishing an article about Armand. Uh, Armand is our superhero, uh, the, the person who is at the moment on the position of apps team lead. We have a separate team that is called apps. This team is responsible for different applications, for different uh, front ends that are working. Um, and uh, uh, Arman has lots of experience in uh, product uh, design and in general product management. Um, so he is a pretty, pretty nice and very sweet person to work with. I'm super privileged that I'm able to work with him. So check out uh, who is Armand and uh, become a little bit closer to the Aurora Labs team. And another thing that uh, that is going to happen pretty soon, and, and this is something for the developers, for techies, and this is the ENCODE and Aurora Hackathon. So we're launching the first fully focused on Aurora Hackathon together with our partners, um, Near, Metapool, and Axelar. And uh, we are, I'm inviting everyone who is uh, who has been looking for a place where to hack 
uh, to this particular hackathon. There will be tons of new information about it. Uh, there will be uh, office hours with our DevRel team. There will be workshops. There are, again, on the Dev portal, you are able to find all of the uh, information about this hackathon. And also there are some challenges uh, with, uh, uh, with some uh, uh, with some bounties that are attached to that. So check it out. There are quite a lot of interesting things. And probably the most fun thing is that using our latest tech developed, Aurora Cloud, we actually showcased it directly on this hackathon for all of you. We have launched a hackathon silo, so the EVM compatible network that is working on top of the near mainnet. Um, and uh, what is what is interesting about it, it is that for the hackathon participants, this silo is completely free. So during the hackathon time, all of the transactions that are going to be executed there are going to cost nothing. And this is not a testnet environment. It is actually working on the near mainnet, which means that through cross-contract calls, you are able to access live data and live liquidity from near and Aurora mainnets which is absolutely great. So for example, you do not need to think, okay, where I'm going to get the Oracle data. You can just use cross-contract calls and get this data directly from the different Oracles that are working inside of Aurora and your ecosystem and so on and so forth, right? So the applications here are, are limitless and there are many, many different great things that you are able to do. Uh, the time for our team to set up Hackathon Silo was... Uh, approximately one week or even less than that, uh, which means that for any particular application that you would like to do in case you're willing to have your own EVM compatible network because of different reasons that are listed or some of the reasons are listed on auroracloud.dev website, uh, you're able to expect or you're, you can expect absolutely the same timeline for your, uh, for your specific EVM compatible network. Moving on to different deployments and launches, uh, Calder, uh, the loyalty platform, Web3 loyalty platform, has uh, is working on the integration with the Aurora network. And uh, they have been chosen, as far as I understand, as an official uh, kind of platform for, uh, for loyalty for NIR. Actually, let's check it out. Um, so NIR protocol was, yeah, they were, yeah, Calder will serve as Near Protocol's loyalty program provider for the upcoming brand partnership. Here you go. That's it. This is the actual wording of the announcement. So pretty thrilled that, uh, that you know, these different pieces of the ecosystem are able to work together, right? Aurora as an EVM compatibility layer, making sure that uh, it is easy to develop smart contracts there. The near as a scalable backbone for this, and also both as a front-end solution um, for for different applications. And by the way, in case you are willing to understand how to use BOSS with Aurora and with uh, uh, with near, uh, again, I'm welcoming welcoming you to the developer portal. You are able to go to the dev feed here, and there is an absolutely a tremendous article by Michael building a game using near Aurora and BOSS. So this is a tutorial where you are able to get all of the insights inside of the cross-contract calls, building boss front-end, and many, many other things. So super cool with the real code provided here. Just check it out. Uh, super, super nice thing. Okay, uh, we've done with Calder, and now we are moving to our uh, other, uh, one of the favorite partners, Metapool. So as as you know already by now, or maybe you don't know, so I'm telling this to you, Metapool has launched uh, first liquid staking protocol on Aurora, uh, and they launched a token uh, that is called ST or or I just have to say store store <laughs> store. <laughs> um, so ST Aurora, let's let's keep it like that. Um, and this token represents this staked Aurora, right? So through Metapool, you're able to stake these Aurora tokens. They are going to deploy these Aurora tokens into the staking contract uh, for Aurora. And then people would be able to interact, though 
the tokens are staked, they have a liquid representation of the percentage of the pool that is staked, and people are able to interact with it. This solution improves the efficiency of the capital, makes things, uh, makes your capital more liquid. So that's a pretty typical and very straightforward thing to do. So check out uh, Metapool's uh, new article on their Medium about the, uh, oh, sorry, it's not Medium, sorry, on their website. Um, and uh, uh, about how this thing is working, what are the risks uh, there, and so on. Do your own research, not uh, not pushing you to uh, to buy anything. Uh, very and actually, actually, I was in my thread here. I was I was writing to everybody that please, please, uh, please don't be misled by marketing. Do your own research. Right? This is super super important for everybody. Yeah, and the uh, ST Aurora, uh, but I think that ST Aurora is something worth to check out. Moving on to the news from our communities, our Latam community has been um, uh, he has been doing a class on the Aurora um, and Solidity um, in the National Polytechnic School of Quito. So it is it is absolutely tremendous to see the Latam community being so active. Uh, great, great job, guys! And uh, yeah, let's let's move blockchain into masses. And last but not least, Aurora hunt hunters have been looking into different costs of the NFT mints, uh, and they have been collecting this uh, data and some stats. And it seems like you know the, the cost of mint of uh, of a single NFT or multiple NFTs um, is is pretty low. In fact, uh, among the EVM compatible chains, Aurora cost of minting NFTs is the lowest, right? So in case you're searching for a uh, EVM compatible network uh, where you are willing to mint your NFTs, well, you can take a look at Aurora just to reduce your costs. So these are all news for today. From our side, let me check on the different uh, questions, uh, different uh, things that are that are happening in our chat uh, in in the YouTube. A lot of people that are greeting each other. Hello, everybody. Um, okay, so Slava, Slava, correcting me. Slava, thanks very much. Yeah, just two three days for deployment of a silo. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, great. Hello, everybody, and thanks for uh, tuning in this update. Uh, I wish you a very great end of the week. Um, and as always, let's meet uh, in exactly one week from now on the next Friday Alphodic sessions here on the Aurora YouTube channel. Thank you, and see you.